Welcome to Up to the Minute. We're live from the HCC TV studios this morning. I'm Todd Duplantis. Good to have you with us. It's a Thursday morning. It's a little chilly outside in the 30s. I don't know what happened to the weather. Tuesday, it was, I think, approaching 80. Now we're in the 30s. Tony Rayo Sutherland, my co-host, joining this morning. Tony, I know your, your background in training is in meteorology. So what's going on here? <laughs> Meteorology. Well, news, but not meteorology. <laughs> well, I just gave you an extra title, so. Thank you. I like that. What I do know is that February is supposed to be the shortest month of the year, but it feels like it's taking forever to get through. When is March coming? If we still got another, you know, not a whole week, but we still got a few more days before it gets here. Yeah, well, I got news for you. March is coming on Tuesday, so you'll be good <laughs> on Tuesday. And by the way, that's also, uh, that's Fat Tuesday. Yes. What happened there? That's a big celebration down in New Orleans. And we talked about yesterday of doing a live shot in New Orleans for Mardi Gras. Why not? You know, we, We've got our boss here on the show joining us this morning, so maybe we'll ask him about that during the show. But I don't know, Tony. Correctly. Yes, of course. We, we can try it. Why not? <laughs> hey, uh, we do have a great show lined up for you today. It's a big day here at HCC. We've got our Black History Committee or the Scholarship Gala happening tonight. More on that later in the show. Two special guests coming your way. You're watching us live on Facebook and YouTube. We appreciate you joining us, but you can also catch us three times a day on HCC TV. You can watch the rebroadcast at noon, 5 or 10 p.m. for your viewing pleasure. And anytime you don't catch the show live, you can always watch us in social media, Tony. That's what social media is for. Houston Community College District, look for that. Not just HCC, because there's a lot of HCCs out there. But go for Houston Community College District for Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, social media, you name it, we're there. <laughs> That's exactly right. All right, Tony, stick around. We're going to be back with you shortly because you'll be interviewing this next guest I'm going to introduce real quickly. Uh, we've got a person here. This is Mary Warwick. She is executive director of the Texas Wildlife Rehabilitation Coalition. And uh, good morning, Mary. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I understand you guys do some great work. We're looking forward to hearing about all the things you have coming up. So stick around, grab Will some do. coffee. We'll be with you in about 10 minutes. All right. See you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. We're going to kick things off with a very special guest. You know, this month is Black History Month, and we've been featuring several of our leaders across HCC's uh, platforms. And today we've got a very special guest, our Vice Chancellor of Communications and External Affairs, Ramel Young is joining us this morning. Good to see you, Ramel. Good morning, Todd. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about being here. And thank you for the, and the team for all that you do for HCC and the HCC TV area. I am excited about being on Up to the Minute. Yeah, well, good to have you here. I think it's a first, first time you've been on the show, so we have to get you back on again. Let me ask you this. Um, you're working now as the Vice Chancellor of Communications and External Affairs. Previously, you worked specifically with Congress in the political arena, yeah. and I understand you have some background in that. Maybe you can tell us what brought you to that area uh, before you came to HCC. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. So, well, I, I've i always wanted to be in the, the government space, particularly lobbying or engaging in the policymaking process. And early in the 90s, I had the opportunity to serve as a county commissioner in the state of South Carolina for a nine year, an eight year period from 90 to 98. During that same period, I um, thought about going to law school in, in order to elevate my understanding about all that that's associated with policy making. And so I found myself going to DC to law school and had an internship on Capitol Hill. Ultimately ended up working for the Department of Energy serving as the liaison for uh, the, the SBA, the um, Small Business Administration General Counsel's Office. It was a liaison between that office and Capitol Hill, where I would go back and essentially do the things that I'm doing now for HCC. And so I've had a long history of being around government at the federal, state, and local levels and find myself doing that same type of work at HCC. It's been exciting. It's been a long journey. That's a little snapshot into how I got here. Uh, I guess I would add that when I came to Houston from South Carolina at, uh, by way of uh, Washington, D.C., I lobbied with uh, Reliant Energy and then ultimately found the opportunity here through then Dr. Leslie, who was, who was chancellor, 
And now I'm here with Dr. Maldonado trying to make a positive difference in the lives of students in the, in the government relations space, and then working along with you guys in the communication space. So I'll stop there and um, just say it's been, a, it's, it's been a wonderful ride. Let me ask you this, because I've talked to several of our leaders who have worked in, uh, you know, the the, uh, the private sector and then moved on to uh, public education. What's been the biggest change? You were with Reliant. You come to HCC. What would you say would be the biggest obstacle or change for you in making that switch or jump? Yeah, so um, corporate entity versus a public uh, institution. Um resource, the way we do our work in the public sector is a, is a bit different. And um, on the lobby side, in, in the corporate sector, of course, there's there's greater opportunity to um, engage members by way of uh, contribution. But but HCC still has that same opportunity. We provide our, our, our facilities for a public purpose where members come in and, and share what's going on that's important to the, co- to, to the community, what's important to us. And so I think the the, the 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 playing field gets level a bit. So, but there there are some some of those small differences. Uh, but but my experience in the corporate environment and here are working well for me. I'm able to use what I learned there right. and uh, use it in this environment. So, not a whole lot of difference, but some 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 small differences. Let me ask you this, Ramel. We're celebrating Black History Month. Um, let's yeah. talk a bit about your background and what this month means to you personally. Okay. Well. When I think about Black history, I think about reflection. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, I think about journey, journey of a people. I think about struggle, uh, progress of that uh, that same group of people. And then, of course, celebration, which we're doing tonight, I think, with the HCC Black History Gala. So yeah, what comes to mind for me when I think about history also is historian uh, Carter G. Woodson, who really is, I would call, the father of, of Black History Month. He started... Um, the what's called Black History Week or African uh, Negro History Week. And what we note that to be today is Black History Month. Uh, Dr. Woodson was a the second person to graduate from Harvard. Um, and so I, I think about uh, that that journey, how he got us here to to celebrate uh, Black History Month today to reflect to, to uh, look at the, our journey and to look at the struggle that we've gone through, the progress we've made, and then, of course, to celebrate. Speaking of Harvard, um, a bit about your background. You attained two degrees and successfully completed a higher education management development program from Harvard and Howard. Maybe you can tell us about those two experiences. Well, so education, I, it's interesting. I, I, I find myself working in education. I come from a family of educators, and so It's not, uh, I guess, not strange that I find myself working in education. My mother was a a teacher. um, And so education was always deemed to be something critically important for progress in my household. Uh, The the more you have, the more you can navigate, the more opportunity uh, it's available to you. And I would say that's been um, true in my life. Um, And so Harvard was was introduced to me by way of HCC, but but for my coming to HCC, I don't know if I would have uh, uh, been there. We had um, a former president, Dr. Irene Porcarello, was very instrumental in me getting there. I want to acknowledge her, her for that. Uh, during my undergraduate period, you mentioned Howard. I also went to Howard, but I finished from the University of South Carolina, my undergraduate degree in political science. And then later I went to law school at the District of Columbia School of Law. So education is 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 very important to me. It's been instilled in me. Uh, and then I find myself here trying to make that opportunity available for the students that we serve at HCC. And it's been exciting for me, a very exciting journey. Uh, you are now over the communications team. And uh, I know uh, you had some experience a few years ago working with the communications team. Yes. What's been the biggest surprise uh, working with communications for you? Well, so I, I have an opportunity to work with you guys on a daily basis. Uh, I love the creativity that that's in in the communications department. Uh, you guys are doing excellent work. I'm I'm excited about being a part of it. It is new to me. I'm I'm principally in the government relations space. You you mentioned that I have worked in the communication space uh, before, uh, and coming back here uh, to do it again is stretching me. I am uh, really excited about that. Education is uh, I'm I'm learning every day. So. I'm excited about the new experience. Working with the community has been something that's really exciting to me. So I'm able to take the skills 
And I've learned in the government relations space on connecting with people and making it work in the communication space and meeting a lot of great people externally and internally to help us do that. So yeah, thank you for the opportunity to share that, that piece of information. Thanks for being here on the show, Ramel. I know tonight uh, you mentioned earlier, you're, we yeah. know you're on the Black History Scholarship Gala Committee. Um, the event will happen tonight. It'll be live stream on abc13.com. But if you're watching this right here, folks, tune back in at 7 p.m. because we will be sharing that live stream. Uh, we played a big role in putting that together here at HCC TV, and we're proud to do so. Ramel, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know Tony me. wanted to ask you about the New Orleans trip next week, but we're going to put that on hold. We'll hit you up on that later in the week. Oh, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Coming, <laughs> have you covered. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. And thanks for inviting me to be a part of Up to the Minute today. Thanks, Ramel. We'll talk to you soon. Bye now. All right. We're going to turn things over to Dr. Tony. And you've got a special guest. I'm looking very forward to hearing from your guest, Tony. Oh, yes. Um, and she is actually from my area, Fort Bend County. That's where I live. Mary Warwick. She is the executive director of the Texas Wildlife Rehabilitation Coalition. Thank you for being with us, Mary. Thanks for having me. Looks like you have a friend with you there. I do. This is Pico. He's our <laughs> red-tailed hawk. We'll talk a little bit more about him in a minute. Oh, neat. Okay. Uh, that's good. I get to interview a hawk as well yes. as a person. I like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you've got a lot of things coming up and we want to talk about uh, the coalition and everything, but uh, this weekend, you've got a chili cook-off, right? Tell us yes. about that. We have our second annual chili cook-off. It's been postponed several times for live events. We had a virtual chili cook-off last year, but we're super excited this year we got, get to go live. It'll be at John Knox uh, Presbyterian Church on uh, Gessner, and it's from 3 to 6 on Saturday. Excellent, excellent. Um, now, what do folks get to do at this? I know, obviously, you get to eat the chili, which is wonderful, but what else is going on there? Right. So for $10, you um, get a ticket that allows you to get in and taste all the chili you want. We have about chili, 10 chili contestants so far signed up. So lots of chili to taste. Um, we uh, For $5, you can also get a souvenir cup to do beer tasting. And um, we have um, we also have a vegan option for chili. We have uh, regular hot dogs, vegan hot dogs. We have lots of yard games to do. Um, our animal ambassadors, which we'll talk about in a minute, will also be there. Uh, to meet, we have a screech owl, a beautiful wood duck, um, lo lots of animals uh, to get to meet. We'll have education, um, little talks, five minute talks throughout the day, uh, door prizes. We have our silent auction on uh, display to look at all those products. So we've got lots, lots going on. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about Pico there. He he looks like he's ready to fly. <laughs> yeah, he's he's uh, tied to my glove, so he's he's oh, not okay. going to go anywhere. And we've okay. had Pico for about a year. He uh, is a red-tailed hawk. This is his second year. You can see his beautiful tail. Ooh, so yes. uh, a year after they hatch, when they molt and uh, get these beautiful tail feathers. Um, see his beak. It's okay. He's never seen people on video before, so he's uh -oh. a little unsure. You can see his top beak uh, is broken off. So uh, last year when he was uh, a first-year bird and he left the nest, he went out to hunt, and they think he tried to get a, a quick meal out of a chicken coop and uh, oh. broke that top oh. beak off. Ow. And Ow. the top beak does not regrow once it's lost. Uh, we can replace it, but only with an aesthetic beak. So it really wouldn't help him be able to tear anymore. apart his meals. So he can't be released back in the wild. So he actually lived at my house uh, for quite a while and uh, waiting on federal permits to move him to our education permit. So uh, we got him moved. And so now he can participate in education programs, go out to schools, live at the center, uh, do all kinds of nice things to he help educate the public. He can be a professor, Professor Pico. Professor Pico. <laughs> Tony, yes. I've got a I've got a question for Mary. <laughs> Mary, I want to know um, in dealing with a wild animal like this. I mean, people see this and they're thinking, "Wow, you know, it's it's a bird, just like a parrot or something like that." Maybe you can explain the difference between the peculiarities of dealing with a red-tailed hawk as opposed to a, a parrot that's raised in captivity. 
how does that work? Because a lot question. of people think, well, I, I can just get a hawk one day. Well, two two differences. One is, um, you know, parrots have been um, domesticated over over a long time, so they are bred um, in captivity and they're hand fed and they're uh, right. they get used to people. Um, uh, hawks aren't like that. They're wild. Pika will always be wild. He will always want to fly free, which uh, breaks my heart that he can't, but we have the best life we can give him here. Uh, another uh, difference is, um, is that it's illegal to own any kind of wildlife. Um, you have to be permitted. Even we have to jump through hoops to be able to keep him as an education animal. It took uh, several months, about eight months to get the permits. So it is illegal. All hawks, any kind of uh, bird pretty much is covered by the um, um, treaty, bird treaty act. So um, it is illegal. They're, they're protected and, and rightfully so. So really, if someone is trying to save an animal, they see like, a, you know, a hawk that's injured or something like that. You're the agency they would call to bring in or or right. to, to help save those so, animals. They shouldn't approach themselves. Well, so if a, if a hawk is down, they can pick it up and put it in a container and bring it to us. A good Samaritan law covers them during that period. Okay. They just can't keep it long term, like get it to us within 24 hours. Um, we don't go out and pick up animals. Typically, if there's something really uh, urgent and we have uh, staffing to do it, we'll do that. But mostly people bring animals into us. That's how we get them. So there's a process, too. I, I, I was noticing a flyer that you had out for a process for somebody to bring the animal to you and what you go through to uh, get them well. Right, right. So we do have a process of intake here. It takes a little bit of time to get all the information that we need so we have a good background about animals so we can give them the best treatment when they are in the veterinary room. So uh, when our staff looks them over, they know exactly kind of their history, like you would. your doctor wants a good history on you. We need a good history uh, to be able to tell specifically what to look for. We do an overall exam, but it helps to know those details um, to provide what they need. Now, what about Woody? He's a, a male wood duck. He yes, is <laughs> he is beautiful, and he will be at the um, at the event this weekend as well. So um, he was raised illegally by somebody that found him, and she didn't know how to raise a wood duck. Didn't raise him with other wood ducks, so he got imprinted on people. So it is unsafe for him to be released. He doesn't have any fear of people or domesticated animals. And so uh, a dog or cat could easily um, attack him. He is beautiful, has wonderful colors, and um, and he's going to make a great ambassador as well. And they'll both be at the chili cook-off this weekend. Mary, like what, what type of animals do you guys have besides, it, you know, you have hawks and ducks. Do you take in all wildlife? All um, native wildlife, Texas wildlife. Yes, we do. Um, if we get something that's um, usually a very large animal, we'll send it to one of our home-based rehabilitators that have more room and time to spend on them. Uh, In-house, we raise baby squirrels, baby opossums, baby birds. We've already started getting a lot of those in. That, um, you know, Usually that season, baby season starts about March, uh, but you know, with all the differences in weather lately, it's um, started earlier in February. So um, we've started getting those in already. Um, and our busy season will go through uh, October. Um, so we start with squirrels and opossums and go into birds in the summer. And then opossums just keep going all summer. And then squirrels start again in the fall. So it keeps us really busy. About how many animals do you take in each year? About 4,500 to 5,000 a year. It's a lot. That is amazing. Yes. And, and basically, these are all wild animals uh, that have been injured in some way. And people find them and they bring them to you. Correct. Now. How do you uh, pay for all this? I know that you're going to have the chili cook-off, but it's got to be more than that. Um, we are funded um, only by donations, grants, and our events. So we don't get any government funding. We don't get any um, city funding, any kind of government funding at all. So we rely on people's donations and participation in our events and grants. Oh, wow. Well, and I understand you're opening up a new hospital soon. Yes. So um, last year we got over $60,000 in grants to buy new equipment for our hospital. So we moved it to a larger section of our center and have expanded. We have all new surgical equipment, uh, laboratory equipment, examination equipment, uh, anesthetic equipment to provide uh, more um, 
more services to the patients that uh, come in so we can take care of things quicker, get diagnoses quicker, and um, get them back up and, and releasable quicker. So what do you think is the most important thing uh, that the coalition does? I mean, I know you have your mission and everything. What is what's important about it for us? The most important thing, I think, I mean, it's hard not to say education is the most important thing, but getting these animals back out and releasing them is the most important thing we do. Um, there's nothing as a rehabilitator like uh, release day. It's not a sad day for us. It's a happy day. You know, you've worked so hard on these animals and to see him, them run or fly or swim or whatever free is uh, so exciting and heartwarming. So, Mary, you uh, do some incredible work out there. It's that's it's amazing uh, what y'all do. Uh, and we are, you know, I'd like to uh, in the future get out there and, and do a story with you guys. And oh, that see. would be uh, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah we'd love come to out to the out chili cookoff this Sunday. <laughs> that's it. You know, put that on. I might be able to make it out there. That sounds pretty good with some uh, yeah. with some chili and all the things you have going on. Get to see the animals. If you're yeah. interested, folks, in going to the chili cook off, we'll put some information in our social media post after the show. Mary, that's thank great. you for being here. Thank you. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you come see, come thank see you Pico, Pico at the chili cook off. Yes. Professor Pico. Bye. <laughs> Pico. Thanks again. Bye. All right. Thank you. Okay, we've got a few HCC news and announcements. Uh, first off, um, you know this man very well, Mattress Mac. Everybody in Houston knows him, but uh, he was working. Did you know he does some partnerships here with HCC? And HCC's Northwest Center for Entrepreneurship is presenting Mattress Mac School of Selling with six free, that's right, free virtual sessions, again, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, for information, we'll have some uh, things come in our social media post after the show, but there's one of them March 1st from 10 a.m. to noon, another one Thursday, March 3rd from 10 a.m. to noon as well. We'll look for the link in our social media post. And the DEI series, Tony, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, that series continues. Yes, Thursday, March 3rd, that's next week, uh, from 11.30 to noon. The topic is going to be differing and equal. Dr. Becky Hari and uh, Ms. Cynthia De Los Santos will be um, the guests on the show. And um, you can find it uh, on YouTube, and we'll have a, a link for that after the show. Right, and they're in our counseling and uh, disability services department, so it should be a good show. Uh, you know, food insecurity is a very real thing in the Houston area. Uh, if you're a student, faculty, staff, anyone can face food insecurity where you just may not have enough left over after you pay all your bills to feed your family. That's a reality. Uh, so HCC is countering this by teaming up with the Houston Food Bank. Food bank trailers will be at HCC campuses. Uh, so anyone, anyone at HCC, doesn't matter who you are, you can sign up uh, and We'll, and you can pick a date, time, location, and go pick up your groceries. We'll have a link in our social media post and how you can do that. And uh, another thing's happening, Bravo Bela. What is that all about? It is Dr. Liana Zarno will discuss Representative, Representative Bella Absa. I think I'm pronouncing it right. She is called the most recognizable woman in politics in the 1970s a watershed moment that the United Nations deemed the decade for women, pushing issues from LGBT rights, universal child care, green energy, and data privacy. Uh, Abzug led her peers during polarized times that will feel familiar to our own. And that is happening <clears throat> March 8th, Tuesday at 3.30 at the West Loop uh, room C108. And more information you can get at the end of our show. You'll contact Lauren, um, and I think it's Ker Harling. I'm not sure, but we have it uh, so that you can, um, we have it at the end of the show so that you can contact her and get more information. Okay. All right. We've got uh, another thing going on. Parallel Live, Stanley Kaminsky. Uh, the solo works of Professor Stanley Kaminsky will be featured at HCC's Northwest uh, for its spring 2022 exhibition. 
Check them out at the gallery. The event is free. Uh, that goes through April the 9th, and we'll have some information in our in our uh, social media post. Fast Track training is still available. If you remember, last year we launched a program called Fast Track Training. Good jobs are out there. They have a number of uh, disciplines on their list where you can go in. It's a cool deal. You can go to the website, sign up for the program you're interested in. They find you the funding to pay for the program. They get you trained in a short amount of time and hook you up with a job. We're talking sometimes within 90 days and maybe a bit longer, but you can start a new career all your training's paid for, and they'll get you a job. You really can't beat it. So uh, check that out. It's hccs.edu uh, slash fast hyphen track. Check it out. Uh, spring semester, Tony, if you want to take classes and get credit before the end of the semester, you need to do so and need to do so now. Yeah, HCC second spring eight-week courses kick off after spring break, which is coming right around the corner. So you can register for that right now. And, you know, this is the best time. And as we've said before, we've got all kinds of classes from online anytime, online on a schedule, hybrid, in-person, hybrid lab, all those different ways. Um, but go ahead and, and sign up. Go to hccs.edu slash apply and uh, get ready to take a class. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap up today's show. Tomorrow's Film Friday. Uh, we'll be having a special guest, a young filmmaker here to talk about the girlfriend experience, which was filmed in Galveston. That should be cool. And also we'll visit with former HCC student success story, Tony. Yes. Uh, that person is now CEO of Harmony House. Uh, where she's helping the homeless in downtown Houston. So it's a definite success story for her and the people around her. Absolutely. So join us tomorrow live. I'll be back here at 10 a.m. We'll see you all on Up to the Minute.